Hello everyone. Welcome to Food Every. In this video, we will be discussing the FSCI Central Food Safety Officer previous year question paper. So let us begin. So the first question we have says that at temperatures above freezing activities of foodborne microorganisms can be the given options are stop, slow, rapid or quick. So as we know that microorganisms have the highest growth and activity at a certain temperature range. For example, thermophiles are more suitable at a temperature of 45 to 122 degrees Celsius. Mesophiles will grow easily at 20 to 45 degrees Celsius. Psychrotrophs will survive at 0 degrees Celsius but prefer mesophilic temperature. However, psychrophiles will be more suitable for their growth at minus 15 to 10 degrees Celsius or lower. So majority of the microbes which occur in the food are more active at the room temperatures and also the free water content in the food available decides the microbial growth and it is limited in the frozen state. So as we know that by decreasing the uh, free water content in the food, we can slow the microorganism growth. Therefore, at temperatures below freezing, the growth and metabolism is slowed down. So the correct option for this question is slow. Coming on to the next question we have, sulfur dioxide is widely used to preserve and the given options are papad, nectar, cheese or milk. So let us first look at sulfur dioxide as a preservative. So it belongs to the group of sulfide which is INS220 and it functions as a preservative as well as an antioxidant. Now sulfur dioxide and sulfides are used in extending the storage life of generally dehydrated foods, fruit juices and wines. Therefore, the correct answer for this question should be nectar. Also, sulfur dioxide is known to inhibit the browning reaction. So, coming on to the next question, we have benzoic acid is mostly used to preserve colored products because so the given options are because of its bleaching action, because it may darken the product, because of its characteristic aroma or because it may lighten the product. So, now let us understand benzoic acid first. It is widely used as an antimicrobial agent and its sodium salt is more soluble in water than the free acid hence it is generally used so generally its sodium salt is more used and benzoic acid is very active against the yeast and the bacteria however it is not very much active against the mold therefore in the food products where we require the uh, where we require activity against the yeast and the bacteria their benzoic acid plays a very important role and optimum activity is in the pH range of 2.5 to 4 and therefore it is suitable for acidic food products. Now it is generally used in only colored products because in the long run it may darken the product. Therefore the correct answer to this question is because it may darken the product this is the reason it is mostly used to preserve colored products. So the next question we have asepsis is a process of and given options are keeping microorganisms out removal of microorganisms, maintenance of aerobic conditions or adding chemicals. Now asepsis or aseptic term is actually refers to the keeping the microorganisms out or basically maintaining completely hygienic or sterile conditions. Now when we say maintaining sterile conditions we mean maintaining, uh, maintaining sterile conditions means keeping the microorganisms out. Therefore the correct option to this question will be keeping microorganisms out. Removal of microorganism will not be the correct answer to this question because removal of microorganism is done in, in the processes like uh, let's say pasteurization, sterilization etc. where they are already present in the food and we are trying to remove them. Whereas in aseptic conditions we are maintaining completely sterile condition and keeping the microorganism out. Maintaining conditions so that there is no microorganisms at all. Therefore keeping microorganisms out is the correct answer to this question. So the next question we have is according to FSSA rule, class 2 preservatives include and the given options are acetic acid, dextrose, niacin, glucose. So let us first understand what class 1 and class 2 preservatives are. So all the preservatives except the class 1 preservatives come in the category of class 2 preservatives. So class 1 preservatives are actually the natural preservatives for example common salt, sugar, dextrose, glucose syrup, spices, vinegar, honey edible vegetable oils all of these are the class 1 preservatives which are natural and therefore there are no regulations for them however class 2 preservatives are the ones which are other than the natural therefore they are the generally the chemicals and therefore they have proper regulations they are restricted and they are, uh, they are provided with proper regulations for their use 
So one such preservative is nicin, which is a polycyclic antibacterial peptide produced by the bacterium Lactococcus lactis. Therefore, the correct answer to this question is nicin, which is actually a class 2 preservative, whereas all the other given options, acetic acid, dextrose and glucose are the class 1 preservatives. So coming to next question, we have sulfur dioxide cannot be used to preserve naturally colored juices because of its and the options are characteristic flavor, characteristic aroma, liberation of CO2 or bleaching action. So the sulfur dioxide in the presence of moisture, it is oxidized to H2SO4, liberating the nascent hydrogen. And once this later, uh, this hydrogen is released, it reduces colored substances due to reduction and makes it colorless. Therefore, it has a bleaching action. Therefore, the correct option is that because it has a bleaching action, it cannot be used for naturally colored juices. So the next question is anti-nutrients are also termed as and the given options are metabolic byproduct, synthetic toxicants, natural toxicant or primary metabolites. So anti-nutritional factors are the compounds which reduce the nutrient utilization of the plant or plant products by human food. As we already know, for example, tannin is known as an anti-nutritional factor known to reduce the absorption of iron. Similarly, we have many anti-nutritional factors which are known to interfere with the nutrient utilization of uh, with the nutrient utilization. Now, they are also called as natural toxicant because plants have evolved these substances to protect and prevent themselves from being eaten. Therefore, they are also known as natural toxicants. So, the other name of anti-nutrients is natural toxicant. Now, coming on to the next question, we have water soluble vitamins include and the given options are carotenoids, ascorbic acid, vitamin D and K. So, coming on to the water soluble vitamins, we know that the vitamin B and the C are the water soluble vitamins. So, in the family of vitamin B, we have B1, B2, B3, B5, B6, B7, B9 and B12, which are thymine, riboflavin, niacin, pentothenoic acid, pyridoxin, biotin, folate, cobalamin. Other than the vitamin B, we have vitamin C, which is ascorbic acid. So, other than these options, we have carotenoids, which is vitamin A, D and K. So, we know from these options, uh, option number B, which is ascorbic acid, which is vitamin C, is the correct answer to this question. So, next question we have uh, about the fat-soluble vitamins include, which says vitamin C, ascorbic acid, vitamin A or P-complex vitamins. So, we know fat-soluble vitamins include vitamin A, D, E and K, which is retinol, calciferol, tocopherol and phyloquinone. So, among these options, the correct answer over here is vitamin A. And all the other given options are the water-soluble vitamins. Next question we have is excess glucose gets stored in the body in the form of and the given options are glycogenesis, glycolysis, glucagon or glycogen. Now, first of all, glycogen is a polymeric molecule which is used to store glucose in animals. And once we eat a meal, the glucose resulting from the breakdown of carbohydrates enters the bloodstream. And this large amount of glucose, if it remains in the blood, then the osmotic balance of the blood and the cell fluid will be disrupted and it will be damaged. However, this does not occur since the glucose in the body does not remain in the bloodstream. However, the body converts it instantly to glycogen and stores it in the liver. Therefore, the correct answer to this question should be glycogen, which is being stored in the liver. So coming on to the next question, we have calories provided by 1 gram of fat and the options are 4, 10, 8 and 9. So, 1 gram of carbohydrate we know provides 4 calories, 1 gram of protein also provides 4 calories, 1 gram of fat provides 9 calories and 1 gram of alcohol provides 7 calories. So, the question is asking the calories provided by 1 gram of fat. Therefore, the correct answer to this question is 9 calories. Next question we have the mineral found in hemoglobin is and the options given are sodium, protein, iron and calcium. So we know that iron is an important mineral for healthy functioning of the body and deficiency of iron leads to anemia. Iron is a major component of hemoglobin which is a protein in the red blood cell which carries oxygen from the lungs to all parts of the body and iron is also a very important part of myoglobin which is a protein which carries and stores oxygen specifically in the, mu in the muscle tissue. So the correct answer to this question is iron which is a mineral found in hemoglobin and also other than hemoglobin it is also found in myoglobin. Next is an example of commercially sterile product is and the given options are pickle, canned food, boiled milk, fruit juices. 
So let us first understand what commercially sterile food products are. Now foods which have been heat treated or processed in such a manner to make them free from the viable spoilage causing microbes including the spores capable of growth under the non refrigerated storage conditions that is they are the shelf stable products they have been treated in such a manner that all the viable spoilage microorganisms as well as spores have been excluded and thus they are sterile at the uh, their shelf stable so canning is a food preservation process wherein food is filled in can and jars aseptically and then heat treated in order to make the food product commercially sterile so canned food are commercially sterile food product and therefore canned food is the correct option or the correct answer to this question so heading on to the next question it says one of the major causes for food spoilage are and the options are lack of oxygen reduction reaction with carbon dioxide stored at very low temperature or gain or loss of moisture so we know that light oxygen heat humidity temperature and spoilage bacteria they can all affect both safety and quality of the perishable food products so all of these factors are responsible for playing a role in the safety of the food product so we know that light can uh, promote the reactions in the food it can promote the oxidation and ox oxygen can promote the oxidation of fat colors etc heat can also spoil the food product humidity temperature also play a very important role however moisture gain loss and transfer are always causing deterioration in the overall quality of the food through softening toughening breakdown swelling or shrinkage of the food product so the gain or loss of the moisture will be the correct answer lack of oxygen will uh, lack of oxygen reaction with carbon dioxide and stored at very low temperature all of these will not be responsible for the food spoilage however gain or loss of moisture will be very much responsible for the overall uh, quality deterioration of the food product so next question says that when a food spoil it texture becomes slimy because of the development of nitrogenous compound chlorophyll breakdown development of sulfides or surface accumulation of microbial cells now with the onset of this food spoilage there is accumulation of microbial cells on the surface so on the surface of the food product the microbial cells start to grow which changes the texture of the food product and it becomes slimy therefore the correct answer is surface accumulation of the microbial cells next question says that the standard plate count is not applicable to and the options are ready to eat food which has only cooked ingredients deep fried food fresh fruits and vegetables or ready to eat food which has cooked ingredients and some added ingredients where no cooking process has been used now let us understand first what standard plate count is now standard plate count is commercially it uh, sorry it is commonly used to indicate the quality of the food by measuring the total viable count or microbial load now this test is not applicable for fresh fruits and vegetables or fermented foods or any food product which contain either one or both of them incorporated into it so let's say if any food product is utilizing fermented food in its uh, in its preparation or for fresh fruits or vegetables in its preparation then those foods as well as fresh fruits and vegetables and fermented foods are not uh, are not used spc is not applicable to them the reason being is that they are expected to have a very high plate count due to the natural microflora or uh, natural microbial flora also according to microbiological standards and food safety and standard regulations 2011 appendix p spc doesn't apply on fresh fruits and vegetables so the correct option over here is fresh fruits and vegetables along with fresh fruits and vegetables it also does not apply to fermented foods or any food product which contain either one or both of them in their preparation so next question says that a process where food is first frozen at minus 18 degree celsius on trays and then under high vacuum is called as and the given options are quick freezing cryogenic freezing freeze drying or dehydro freezing so let us understand the meaning of all these terms one by one so quick freezing refers to freezing of the food rapidly to prevent large ice crystal formation cryogenic freezing is freezing of the food using cryogen such as liquid nitrogen which have an extremely low uh, low boiling point freeze drying or lyophilization is a process in which the food is first frozen and then dried by reducing the pressure by keeping the frozen food under vacuum the drying then occurs by sublimation where solid ice gets converted directly into vapors so in the freeze drying process first the food product containing the water will be frozen so once it is frozen and this water is converted into ice this solid ice will be directly converted to vapor by the process of sublimation right so as a uh, so this process is known as freeze drying where the food is first frozen and then it is 
and then it is dried the ice is converted directly into vapors and then we have dehydrofreezing which is preserving the food by partial dehydration uh, dehydration of the food followed by freezing so the correct option here is c freeze drying as it says the food is first frozen and then under high vacuum it is treated so the next question is the c in the cgmp stands for and the options are up to date commitment current or content so cgmp refers to current good manufacturing practices regulations which is enforced by the fda they ensure proper design monitoring and control of the manufacturing process and facilities now this c stands for current which means that the organization must use up to date technology and processes in order to comply with the set regulations so the c here corresponds to current therefore the current uh, the correct option is c current next is listeriosis is generally caused by and the given options are hepatitis a virus l monocytogens norovirus or e coli so herein we have a list of the food borne pathogen and the disease associated with them listeria monocytogens is caused by uh, causes the disease listeriosis so the correct option over here will be l monocytogen uh, l monocytogens which is listeria monocytogens other than this let us look at other food borne pathogens which includes salmonella species which is responsible for causing salmonellosis shigella dysentery which causes shigellosis clostridium botulinum which causes botulism e coli which causes hemolytic uremic syndrome enterohemorrhagic e coli which causes hemorrhagic colitis or enterotoxigenic e coli which is known to cause traveler's diarrhea vibrio cholera which causes cholera staphylococcus aureus which is known to cause staphylococcal food poisoning norovirus which is known to cause gastroenteritis and hepatitis a virus is known to cause hepatitis a so these are the various food borne pathogen and the disease associated with them next question we have is cyclophilic microorganisms grow over a temperature range of and the options are minus 23 to minus 29 sub zero to 20 degree celsius zero degree celsius or less than 20 degree celsius so let us look at the type of microorganisms and the growth temperature we have already seen them so in brief thermophilic microorganisms grow above 45 degree celsius mesophilic between 20 to 45 and cyclophilic from sub zero to 20 degree celsius therefore the correct answer for this is sub zero to 20 degree celsius next question says that one gray is equal to and the options are 10 rads 100 rads 1 rad or 1000 rads so first of all let us understand what gray is now gray is a unit of ionizing radiation dose in the si units now it is defined as the absorption of 1 joule of radiation energy per kg of matter so it becomes 1 joule of energy per kg of food so 1 kg will become 1000 joule per kg of food product now the absorbed dose is also sometimes reported in the unit rad now rad basically refers to radiation absorbed dose which is the amount of energy from ionizing radiation deposited to any media so rad which is radiation absorbed dose 1 gray is equal to 100 rads therefore the correct option to this question is 100 rads next we have radiation dose is defined as the quantity of radiation energy liberated by the food when it passes through the radiation field quantity of radiation energy scattered by the food when it passes through the radiation field or quantity of the radiation energy absorbed by the food when it passes through the radiation field or quantity of the radiation energy dispersed by the food when it passes through the radiation field so let us first look at food irradiation now food irradiation is a process where the food is exposed carefully to a measured amount of intense radiant energy now radiation dose is defined as the quantity of the radiation energy which is absorbed by the food when it passes through the radiation field during during this processing irradiation process is also called as cold sterilization so therefore we know that the radiation dose is defined as the radiation energy which is absorbed by the food because we are concerned how much radiation is the food absorbing once it is passing into that radiation field that is defined as the radiation dose and the main sources for irradiation includes gamma x rays and electron beam all of these can be used for it therefore the correct option or answer to this question is quantity of radiation energy absorbed by the food when it passes through the radiation field during the process with this we end this video stay tuned and keep watching our channel for more upcoming videos thank you for watching